What's good, YouTube? It's day three, January 3rd, 2024. Y'all, we, we, we the third video in. I'm telling you, we're going to do this every day. We posting every single day. 365, I don't give a damn if I'm blind, deaf. I, don't, I can't stand up, paralyzed. I don't care if I realize that I need to be institutionalized when I realize that I am paralyzed. Because I'm not, I'm telling you right now, I'm not stopping making these videos. But look, guys, day three, I just left the gym. Today was leg day. And to be honest with y'all, leg day is some shit that you cannot even, like, think about. Leg day is something you just got to, like, you got to, I mean, you just got to literally throw that shit out your head and, like, like, fuck it, I'm not squatting today. And just... Not even like nonchalantly, like when I go in there, bro, and I squat, I warm up with 135, bro, and I'm telling you, I'm just, I'm not even thinking about it. The less you think about leg day, bro, the better it is, I'm telling you. Don't go in there if you're trying to get your legs, your quads, and you're trying to get strong in your legs, but don't go in there thinking, like, damn, I got to squat today. You're going to be sitting down, I swear to God, <laughs> there's times where I sat there for 30 minutes thinking, like, damn, I got to squat today. That shit is terrible. It's like, Bro, it's you're literally drowning for no reason. Like you're literally drowning in your thought, bro. So fuck it. I'm getting on there. As soon as I go in there, 135. I'm hitting that shit 15 times. So I, you know, warm my legs up, loosen them up, tighten up after I stretch. Then throw 225 on there, hit that for 15 times. That's the backup warm up. That's like the backup warm up to get your legs ready to lift some heavy weight. And today, like I told y'all, I had an incident that happened a few weeks ago when I was in the gym. So I'm just, I'm not taking it light, but I'm just taking it easy. You feel what I'm saying? Like if that makes sense. So, um, so yeah, after 225, 15 times, I put three, 325 on the bar and I squat that about 10 to 15 times. That way I do three sets of that, three or four sets of that today. I was like, I'm doing three because 225 still counts. 225 and 135, believe it or not, even if it's heavy, uh, light, lightweight, it still count as reps and sets. So I got to keep that in mind. So even though 225 and 135 is toning, bro, yeah, like it's, I mean, that's still some weight, uh, not to some people, not to me, but it's still weight though. You feel what I'm saying? But I like to work out with like 325, 355, uh, this gym. <laughs> I go to my car apartment complex gym, bro. They, I maxed out all the weights. I'm too strong for the weights. So I be using all the weights. Nobody can use them when I'm on the, on the fucking, uh, when I'm on a rack. Nobody can use the weights. I use every single one of them. So the most weight you can use is probably like 355. And after that, you can't go no higher because they only got four 45 plates. They got like four... 10 plates, uh, four 25 plates, and I think like two five plates, and maybe a, a fucking two and a half, like two, two and a half. Of, uh, I don't fucking know, but I know you can't go higher than 355. So I'll be maxing out of that one. I can't go higher in bench because my bench is higher than 355, and my squad is higher than 355. So now I got to get a membership. So yeah, yeah, give me a second because I'm thirsty as hell. I just love the gym. I ain't even drink. Mm. Oh my God, that tastes like sugar free piss. Mmm. Mmm. God damn. I swear to God, I feel like what if Jesus pissed in a bottle, that's what it would taste like. No, but for real though, y'all, if I'm telling y'all, this is day three. I've been in the gym, you know what I'm saying? I'm just tracking my record to see where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? Probably towards the middle of the year, around summertime, to see like how much stronger I get. But just going in the gym feels amazing, bro. And I had my knee, I blew my shit out, to be honest with you. So that shit was terrible. Like, I wouldn't say I blew it out, but there were, I, I feel like I was putting too much strain on it. And I swear to God, I have not squatted in like two weeks, but I did like a quad workout like last week, one little workout. So it's been like two weeks since I squatted. Bro, I came back. I'm telling you, if you take a week or two off the gym, you come back stronger, bro. It's no cap. Your body's recovered. It's already used to the weight. It takes a while for you to, to get um, weaker. So you can even take up five to six weeks off the gym and still hold your strength and even get stronger because your body's recovering. You're like it's like you after you get shot or you had an injury, your body's recovering and gets stronger. Your your body's repairing itself stronger than it used to. So I thought I was gonna go in there and squat and not want to, like thinking I'm gonna only do a few less reps than I was normally doing, but shit, I'm doing more. <laughs> that shit is fire, bro. I love taking time off for the gym. I just meant to tell y'all, I took like five days off from the gym the other day and I got stronger in bench. I'm like, what the hell? Took like a week off. It be like that. But yeah, I just wanted to get on and get on here and track uh, my progress with y'all. Um, I want to talk about vacation because I want to go vacation this year and get my passport. Like I've been thinking about going to an island and shit. One thing I can't, one place I want to go, but I can't think about actually sitting on a flight and going to Hawaii. Like I remember when my sister went. Could you imagine sitting on a plane, bro? I don't know how many of y'all like going on a plane, but to be honest with you, bro, it's it's fun to think about vacationing, but bro, that just. Going through the process of going on a plane, I mean, it don't really bother me, but it's, just, it's the fact that 
We don't, we humans, we don't belong in the fucking air. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. We don't belong in the water and we don't belong in the air. We don't have wings and we don't have gills. So let me keep it real. We don't belong in any of those places. It's a reason why we're in between. We're in between the, the sky and water. We're on the ground. That's where the fuck we belong. So that's the reason why we travel in cars. And, and so to be real with you, I can't get up in the sky and fly and I can't swim where I want to go on vacation. So to, for me to think about, I got to get into a plane, get a window seat or Sit somewhere in the plane, and I gotta literally go across. Like the Earth is big as fuck. If you think about it, this motherfucker is scary as shit. Cause I used to have terrible anxiety. It started, it started not too too long ago. I would say my anxiety had started bad back in like 2017. Was it? Yeah, when I got robbed. I didn't have um, anxiety before. It wasn't the 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 fact that I got robbed. It's the fact that I didn't trust nobody no more. I got robbed twice back to back. So, uh, and that's why I moved to Texas. But that's the story I'm gonna tell later on, but um, so cause that that's I got too many story times. But listen, after I got robbed, I could say you could say it was a little PTSD because I didn't trust nobody at all. Anybody walking by my car, walking behind the car, walking by me behind me. I mean, I, I remember that's many times where I cussed people out in Walmart not too long ago for walking behind me. I don't like that shit. You should not be on somebody's ass. So anybody walking by my car, anybody in, with their hands in their pockets or just in general too close. I don't like people close to me. I didn't used to be like that. I didn't used to care. I don't like nobody close to me. I don't like nobody walking behind or next to my car. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people like that. I think that would be normal. But um, like when the anxiety started, I stopped caring about people. Like I start to put trust back in people. I don't care if people like walk by my car no more. Or I still be, I still be like conscious of my surroundings and shit, if that makes sense. But at the same time, I'd be thinking to myself like the anxiety that started from that caused anxiety for everything else. Like I think quarantine was really what did it. Staying in the house for a full year, not being around nobody, bro. I started to get anxiety to go outside. And when you stand in the house all day, you realize how big the fucking earth is. And it's a scary place. And me thinking like me being in a plane, going, going to Hawaii or going to Italy or somewhere. And I'm, I'm looking out the window and that shit freaking me out right now. I'm thinking about it. And you're over like a plenty of like a bunch of oceans and islands, and we're just this earth is so huge. Like you're in just the middle of nowhere, surrounded by water. That shit blows my mind. Like it's scary to think how big this earth is when you're used to going to fucking H E B or the gas station and you used to just being in the city and going here and there. And when you you step outside of that that conference zone and that little area that you used to being in, when you get in a plane and you you flying over water for twelve hours. Seeing nothing but water? Oh my God. Bro, I don't even like going to the pool and just looking at from six feet to the 12 feet to the deep end, bro. That shit blows my mind. Could you imagine, bro, this world, this world is 70% water. And we're literally, I'm, you're flying in a plane looking at nothing but straight water. I don't know what the fuck's in it. You're surrounded by it. You're not a, a fish. So if you get into it, yeah, I can swim. But like, bro, it's only a certain amount of time where I can hold myself for a survival uh. And, and, and a certain time window for uh, survival. So like, I don't belong in the sky either. I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a fucking fish. I mean, I mean, I'm not a fucking uh, bird or a fish. So if I'm in the water, I can't, I can't hold myself, uh, my breath underwater for too long. And then actually, I can. I can hold my breath for damn near like two minutes. But I'm saying like, I'm not a fish. So if say you in a plane and something happened, you get stranded on a fucking island, and you're on a little island the size of your fucking backyard or a porch, and you're surrounded by water. And water just a tsunami hit. You can't beat water. Nothing beats water. Nothing on this earth beats water. Name one thing that beats water. Oil don't get along with water, but it can't beat it. Fire can't beat water. It literally goes out the moment water touches it. Nothing can beat water. Water is literally, water's scary. It's, it's immortal. You can drown in it. You can cook with it. You use it to, to bathe with I mean, it cools you down. It supplies unlimited amounts of resources. It shows you where the resources are. Water is always around resources, by the way. And it's crazy to say that, but that's the only thing they be keeping me back from going on vacation. I'm just thinking to myself, like, bro, I'm in a plane. I'm not a bird. You're in a seat. You're sitting down. Look, I don't want to discourage anybody from going on uh, vacation. Like, go on, a go on vacation, bro. Start vacationing. There's nothing wrong with that. But in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, like, damn, I'm a human. When I'm in a plane, all I'm doing is sitting down in a seat. Any air, I'm just in a seat, in a chair, in the air, flying in the middle of nothing. That shit blows my motherfucking mind. Too close to the sun, I'm too close to the clouds, too far from the ground, and too high enough for impact 
to when if I the plane fall, nigga, it's going straight to the middle of the ocean. The most dangerous place in the world. But yeah, man, I, I, I don't want to get too deep in that conversation because I don't want to discourage nobody, but I want to see the world. And that, that's one anxiety I got to get over. I got to be like, yo, fuck it. Got to see the world. Fuck it, just get on that plane. Because I went in the plane back in 2020, was it? I went to Vegas or 2021 with my girlfriend. We went there to Vegas and um, playing around was cool. I had no issues, except on the way back, the turbulence started. You know what it sounded like? It's like when you put, you know when you put tennis shoes in a washing machine? Like you put like three, four pairs of sneakers in a washing machine, but the washing machine broke. So it kind of sounded like this. Like somebody in the back of the plane giving it back shots. That's what it sounds like. Like somebody fucking the plane. Like Hulk just flew up there, motherfucker, and start fucking the plane. That's what it sounds like. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I got pissed. I had headphones. My girlfriend told me to put headphones in. What the fuck the headphones gonna do? That didn't do shit for me. I'm feeling it, motherfucker. I don't care about the sound. I'm feeling it, motherfucker. It feel like you in one of them 3D seats in a movie theater that, that gives you that 3D effect when you like you in, in that motherfucker. Bro, I swear to God, that shit, man, that shit pissed me off. That shit was terrible. The fucking plane is shaking back and forth and shit. Man, I got mad as hell. I'm pissed. My girlfriend laughing and thinking that shit funny. Like, that shit ain't funny, bro. I'm finna still off on the pilot. I'll sleep that nigga. We all going down. Fuck it at this point. Shit, I don't give a fuck. I'll sleep that nigga. Nigga, fly the plane, nigga. <laughs> shit. And put that nigga in the head like The co-pilot can get these hands, too. The co-pilot can get this fade. Nigga, why you ain't let that? Nigga, why you ain't let that nigga fly the plane like he's a... Nigga, you supposed to help, nigga. Shut up, nigga. We going home. We all going down. Nigga, lose your license. Fucking playing with me, nigga. Everybody going down. Now I don't give a fuck. Fly this motherfucking plane, nigga. Since when did you get a, a fucking washing machine tech to fix the plane? That shit sound terrible. Fuck. Nigga, that ain't turbulence, nigga. That's terrorism. Why the fuck is the plane doing that? Plane don't supposed to make no sound like that, nigga. That shit pissed me off. I, and it's my first time being on a plane in, like, in years. Before that, I went to go see my girlfriend in California, which is like, what, 2017? That was a smooth plane ride. But this one? Nah. This one right here, I should have sued for this. Emotional distress. That's what I should have fucking sued for. That's what the fuck I should have done. Nigga, that should piss you off. You in, you in a plane in the air, and that motherfucker just sound like a washing machine. Just... Sound like a fucking horse is carrying a plane. Do you know what it's like being in a plane? Sound like somebody giving that motherfucker back shots? Yeah, well, when the fuck you in the air? You know ain't nothing around. Why the fuck does it sound like we just hit a speed bump? Why the fuck? Ain't no speed bump in the air. So why the fuck is the plane moving like that? Motherfucker up there doing a worm and shit. That motherfucking plane up there hitting them folks. Like, what the fuck is going on? Motherfucking plane nay nay in and shit. Shit, piss me off. I was like, get me the fuck out this plane, bro. They're gonna talk about, and then we get 15 minutes down to land, and the, the air, the pilot gonna talk about something. Oh, hello, passengers. I'm glad that you, we just made, we just arrived, and we just uh, hit aviation. We had elevation at 10,000 feet. We're getting ready to land. I'm happy that you all came aboard. Thank you for having a safe flight. Safe flight, bitch, to who? Safe flight? Who was you flying? What you was a fly? You was flying cap. That's what you want flying no airplane. You was flying in cap because hey, this this wasn't a safe flight. Nothing safe was about this this flight. This motherfucker said, "I'm glad y'all had a safe flight. I'm glad you lying to these motherfuckers." Cause I knew when I, I heard that turbulence, I looked around and everybody's starting to look. I was like, "Oh, I knew I wasn't the only one." As soon as I heard that, mm -hmm, I pushed my seat up like this and I turned around and looked back, like, "What the fuck going on?" That's how you know shit is crazy. When you look towards the uh, the way where nothing is happening going on, motherfucker, I raised up on my seat and I looked to the back by the bathroom. What the fuck's in the bathroom? Nothing. I feel like the problem was back there, but I knew it wasn't. That's how that's how I know what this how much bullshit this was. When you look the opposite way, what's going on? <laughs> it's like a motherfucker come in there and you sitting down eating at a restaurant or you in Walmart shopping and somebody at the cash. Hey, give me all your motherfucking money. And you standing behind the fucking robber and you looking behind you like, what the fuck is going on? Motherfucker, what you looking behind you for? Type shit. That's how hysterical and crazy shit be when you be looking at something that's going, that's going, that's happening, that's going on. You just like, what the fuck is happening? I'm looking, I told you, I got up on my seat and I looked straight to the back. Like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I'm looking like the toilet got clogged up. But I know down where that's just the turbulence. And that's just my natural response. To look away where it, it's just a natural response for you to look somewhere that you don't know, you don't know what's going on. But I also was looking at everybody else's reaction. Because I just wanted to know if they heard what I heard. Because I know that shit was, that was, I knew I wasn't the only one. That shit pissed me the fuck off. That shit made me not want to. I ain't get on a plane since then. That turbulence and have a motherfucker think twice. 
about getting on an airplane. I swear to God. Your ass finna start trying to travel everywhere in a fucking horse carriage. I ain't lying. Motherfucker finna, hey, y'all trying to go to, uh, y'all trying to go to Puerto Rico next year? Y'all trying to go to Italy? Hey, motherfucker, hey, y'all got a skateboard? We, can, we, can we get there on a the skateboard? Because I know a friend who got an electrical scooter. We can get on that motherfucker too. Nigga, what? How the fuck you gonna get to Puerto Rico on a skateboard? What is... I'm telling y'all, I don't know. I don't want to get on no plane, bro. I really don't. I know I'm going to have to because I want to see the world. When you got a girlfriend, she want to do everything. And you you consider lame or don't want to do nothing if you don't want to put yourself in danger. It is what it is, bro. But, I, man, listen. Like I said, if y'all got anxiety and fear, because my anxiety, I literally didn't have it or none. I fought it. Your mind has to be stronger. If y'all want to ever fight anxiety, watch that movie Malignant. It'll teach you how to fight anxiety. It, it's, it's scary, but it's crazy how the psychological... Um, uh, parts of your brain can take over if you don't take over. Your brain is your own, is a, its own self. Remember that. And if you don't take control of your brain, your brain will take control over you because it got a mind of its own. You can't force your brain to breathe. You can't force your brain to see. You can't force your brain to, only if you close your eyes, but you still have, the brain has to allow you to close your eyes to not see anything. But the point is, your brain does everything on its own. Breathe, gives your heart a beat, it, it moves your arms, keeps your org org organs flowing, sends signals throughout your body to uh, to continue to, um, to uh, generate itself and keep living. So you can't tell your brain what to do. Your brain literally operates itself. So if your brain goes off into a, a part where it's reacting without a way of you controlling it, a brain going to do its own thing and you won't be able to control it until you tell your brain, until you allow yourself to control your brain and say, hey, this ain't normal. We got to chill out. Because like I said, the brain have a mind of its own. If you just let it be and have these panic and anxiety attacks, it's going to do whatever it wants to because you're, in a, you're allowing it to. And it's just all a psychological thing. Just tell your brain, hey, chill out. But you can fight anxiety because I've done it. That shit was, it was kind of hard, but I did it. It really, it really is. All you got to do is do things like exercise, play video games, and just stop thinking so much. Thinking so much is really how anxiety starts, bro. And I learned that myself, literally. Just do something to get your mind off it. Exercise is going to be your number one thing to get rid of anxiety and social anxiety. Stop being scared to go out in public and do shit. Like I said, New Year's came and like I'm taking a video. Usually, keep in mind, I'm, I'm usually one of the types to not want to do this in public. But my girlfriend and I, we're taking the photos and videos uh, and New Year's Eve, the fireworks is here and people, that's a bunch of people behind us. Like, I mean, there's thousands of people. It's the fireworks, uh, it's a firework event downtown Austin. So keep in mind, I'm, uh, I'm, we're taking a video and my girlfriend wants to take one with the fireworks in the behind. I grab the phone and I'm like, yo. Let's take one, baby. And she's like, she's not nervous. She don't really care that much, but she got nervous for a second. I was like, there's people looking there staring. And in, in that moment, I realized like, yo, when I look back on this, I don't want to not have this memory or not fulfill it, uh, or like fully fulfill this moment and regret it because I was afraid who was behind me. So I looked at, I looked at my girlfriend. I was like, I said straight up. I said, I don't care. You will never see these people again. And I said, come on, baby. And she smiled. She just hugged me and she's so happy because that moment right there it was more important to me than these people I'll never see. Just with my girlfriend, this moment is more important to me than people I'll never see again. I'll never see these people again. So why would I have that second of social anxiety and not capture a moment all because these people behind me are looking at me? These people going, as soon as that fireworks over, they go home. They will never think about me ever again. They're not going to go home and think about, oh, some guy with a camera was taking videos of fireworks. That is the most irrelevant people got going. They probably got a dying mom or a sick brother or they just lost their house or they found out they got an illness or they're broke and they're trying to, they got two, three jobs slaving. They got to deal with four or five kids. Nobody is worrying about you like you think you are. They're like, like you think they are. Because I'm telling you right now that social anxiety stuff is just bullshit. It's just you being like self-centered, not in a bad way, but it's, it's you being self-centered and thinking that everything's about you because you feel like you either got too much attention on you or you're doing something that you know that will cause attention or you think that whatever you're doing is um, drawing too much attention to you and you hold yourself on a pedestal to where you think that you're attention worthy like oh people are going to stare at you because you're doing this or in your mind you like feel like a celebrity i promise you it's not that there's a million people that walk and that there's many people that walk by you every day and you forget who they are you saw somebody yesterday or today and you already forgot who they were so it's it's good to just forget social anxiety and do your thing because one day you're gonna look back and when you're older you're gonna have the confidence to walk in public 
but you're going to realize like, damn, I, when I was younger, I wish I didn't have too much social anxiety. Hold your chest out because you only be young once. You can't go back in time. So how did you act? How much confidence did you have when you walk around? Did you stick your chest out? Because I know I, this is the one thing that people have a problem doing is like walking around and they got their head down. My mom told me about this one, like having your head down, but like you, it's hard for you to ever look straight or any, at anybody in general or look up. It's uncomfortable. She told me the moment you start sticking your chin up and, and looking up when you walk, it creates confidence and it removes that social anxiety. Because I know a lot of us, that's why a lot of people are on their phone. They're socially awkward. They feel uncomfortable. So they walk around all day with their phone like this because they, they're afraid to look up. And I've, I, now I don't even have my phone out. I don't even got my phone out when I walk. I walk without my phone because I know it, it removes social anxiety completely. And it feels good. I make sure when I walk somewhere, I put my phone in my pocket as soon as I get out the car. Because as soon as I got my hand in my, my phone in my pocket, I'm going to want to hold it while I'm walking in the store. As soon as I get out the car, I put that shit in my pocket. And then I lock the car and I keep, I walk. And I forget that I got my phone in my pocket. It creates confidence, self-awareness, and you get to appreciate more. How much are you missing out on? Because my mom told me, she said, when you're walking down with your, walking with your head down, you're missing out on the beauty of life. You're walking and not realizing like, even if, well, no matter where you're at the park, you're missing out how the, the trees blow in the wind. You're missing out the beautiful sun, how it beams on the trees and the reflection on, of, of just grass and, and, and nature itself. Because you're so closed in, you're narrow, you're blinding everything out because you're so, all you see is this. You got a social anxiety tunnel vision. You're just locked in on this. You're afraid to look everywhere because you've, you don't want to lock eyes with somebody or you, you're uncomfortable. You don't like what you're wearing. That's bullshit. You only get one life. You better walk around and appreciate everything. You might miss out. You might see something that might trigger your day. Because remember, you you keep doing that social anxiety uh, tunnel vision. You're going to create anxiety to your brain because it's going to be afraid to look outside of what it's usually looking out to. You got these, uh, what do you call it? What's those things in um those bumpers and, and bowling? I call it like a, a, a bumper, bumper vision. <laughs> you just don't want to look. Every time you try to look outside, you just, oh, you just... Oh, you just look back in. You don't want to look outside of the bumpers. Every time you look, you, oh, I'm afraid. I got to strike every time. I'm scared. To, I'm scared to look in the gutter. Like what? It's you got to stop that and live your life. Be happy. Walk around with and look at everything. And because remember when we were little, us '90s kids, bro. We you know how it was. We looked. Every, we didn't have phones. We didn't grow up with phones. Everything was vision with us. That's how our brain triggered dopamine and endorphins. We was happier when we were younger because we didn't have no fucking phones. And that's a conversation for another time. But I'm gonna cut it short because uh I don't I don't I don't know who got to, to the end of this video and it's already been 20 something minutes. This is day three, and we gonna I'm telling y'all we're gonna keep it rolling all the way to the end of the year. So I appreciate y'all for watching. For y'all that are watching, y'all been tuning in, y'all gonna rock with me. I'm watching the comments, y'all rocking with me till since the, uh uh until the end of the year, I promise. When this new this does YouTube uh, channel blow up, I got everybody who's been there since day one. So I appreciate y'all for watching, and we will get there. We're on our road to 100,000 subscribers. I appreciate y'all for, for watching. I love y'all. Be blessed and, and, and remove anxiety, and y'all stay positive and exercise. I love y'all. Peace.